Ladies and gentlemen, what's happening? Welcome to the Suplex City Wrestling Podcast. My name is JJ Purdom, and here, right here in the virtual studio, is the one and only Scotty the Body Folder. Hi, Scott. Hey, JJ. How you doing, man? Charles, I see you over there. You're hiding on me. Well, I'm currently drinking some uh, really bad hotel coffee at the moment, um, but it, it's what ails you. Also here in the studio, getting ready to talk WrestleMania and all the happenings in pro wrestling is Charles Money Marquez. Hi, Chuck. AJ, good morning. Good morning, Scott. How you guys doing? Well, I'm doing pretty good. I'm sure Scott, Scott's like on a new medication. So I think last night they, the assisted living home that he has him in, they, they have him living in. I think they had him, were you in bed by six, Scott? Uh, you know, I had I had my dinner at three in the afternoon, bed by six, and then I was up at two in the morning, ready to go, watching watching my news programs and uh, Wheel of Fortune. I Scott, I love the fact that you are always about the improvisation. Yes, and let me let me go ahead and take that and and run with it and add on to that. Uh, this week we're talking about one of the happenings that happened last night on Friday Night SmackDown as we record this. SmackDown was great as we are headed into WrestleMania 39 season. WrestleMania goes Hollywood as they're going to L.A. And this year, we are going to get father versus son. We've got Rey Mysterio versus Dominic. It was confirmed last night on Friday Night SmackDown as Dominic came out and was instigating a tussle with his father. And Rey turned him down. He said, I'm not going to fight you, son. And he walked away, got up the ramp. Well, in the crowd was Dominic's mom, Rey Mysterio's wife, and Dominic's sister. And he walked over, Dominic walked over to the two ladies in the in the crowd, talked a lot of trash. Eventually, Mrs. Mysterio got up and Dominic got right in her face, screamed at her, and told her to shut up. Well, here comes Rey Mysterio and Rey. Dude, he had a doozy of a haymaker that he threw at Dominic. Dominic ate a big ham sandwich and went down on his butt, and Rey Mysterio accepted. And we're finally going to get father versus son, Rey Mysterio versus Dominic at WrestleMania. Guys, I'm excited. I'd love to see Dominic, who is on a career high already in the short time that he's been around. Of course, he has been the greenest of green as a baby face and was the tag team champions with his dad at one point, the first ever father, son tag team championship title holders. And I was really concerned. The guy's greener than a pepper tree uh, as Jim Cornette likes to say. And here he is now uh, a couple of years in, and he's probably the best heel in the business, in my opinion. Now I know a lot, a lot of an argument can be made for MJF, but I feel like Dominic gets genuine heat and is a genuinely hateable person who you feel like you can beat up. And I think that all of the social media usage of Dominic going to the Mysterio's house, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and instigating this to try to build to this match has been nothing short of remarkable. And then, of course, him going to county uh, for a couple of days, and now he's a hardened criminal. It's just, it's really, really great TV. And I think that I, of all of the matches that are at WrestleMania, I think this is the sleeper that could very well be the in-ring show stealer. Uh, Charles, what do you think about Rey Mysterio taking on his very own flesh and blood, Dominic, at WrestleMania 39? Well, I think this last year, this buildup has been absolutely great. Uh, you're right. Uh, I think at the very beginning, he was basically uh, not as believable as the WWE would need him to be. But man, over this last year, these different incidences at the uh, Mysterio home, uh, just everything that he's been doing, of course, you know, his uh, stretch and county that turned him into a uh, hardened criminal and uh, just everything just week after week. You know, just the uh, smarminess uh, and just the the punchableness that he's uh, the character that he's created has been absolutely great. 
and uh, and we saw it with our own eyes uh, last night. He finally pushed his dad to the limit, and Rey Mysterio had had enough, and he gave him the big uh, the big haymaker, as you call it. And it's on at WrestleMania, father versus son. This is going to be great. Uh, all of us who've been watching wrestling a very long time remember Dominic is the little kid that was in the middle of the Eddie Guerrero uh, Rey Mysterio feud back in the day. And uh, here he is all grown up, uh, ready to fight uh, Pops, and uh, we'll see what happens. But you may be right. This one may steal the show. I think it's going to be wonderful. I think that it can't be said enough. I think people miss the fact that uh, Dominic has actually grown his hair out and started to cut his hair like Eddie Guerrero in that famous Latino heat character. So uh, that's just a real subtle thing that he's doing. That's like taking on more things of Poppy uh, and just playing back to that entire angle about how, you know, Eddie's his real father and stuff like that. So Scott, I realized that you as El Cornhusker is the resident Lucha expert here in the house. So are you looking forward to this match? And do you see it being a potential show stealer in ring, considering that Rey Mysterio is there? Well, just like you and Charles said, this buildup for this match has been incredible. They have let it do the slow burn. I mean, it's been you know, October, November, December, January, February, March. I mean, for WWE to take that long to build a program up in the old days under uh, the other guy, we won't mention Vince by name, Vince, but uh, oh, dang it, there I go again. Anyway, Triple H has done a great job. I, I applaud him for this. But as far as this show being a sleeper for WrestleMania, no doubt about it. You have father versus son. How often do you get to see that? And, and me as a father who raised two, two boys through their teenage years, they're now adults. Who wouldn't want to just smack the swarmy smile off of their teenage son's face? My God, what a treat that would be. So, you know, if I'm Ray, if I could sneak a few uh, potatoes in, <laughs> I'm doing it. I'll teach that boy a lesson or two. But no, it's it's it, I'm looking forward to that match a lot. And the build up, everything about it has just been perfect. Yeah, I love the fact that it has been a slow build. They did the thing with them both being on Raw and Dominic had went heel, joined Judgment Day and was just tormenting his father to the point where Ray went to management and said he wanted to leave and ended up going to SmackDown. So he literally chased him off of Raw and it was able to allow this moment to breathe, to build to this match. And they still utilized social media and then eventually utilized Ray, or excuse me, Dominic, making his way over to SmackDown with Rhea a couple of times uh, for Rhea to be able to build her match with Charlotte at WrestleMania. Um, and this has turned into one of the hotly contested matches that like a lot of people look forward to. And it's because of that slow build. There's other matches that are happening on the WrestleMania 39 card that have literally just kind of been slapped together over the last couple of days. And it, it feels like you're not, you're not giving enough time for some of these matches, but I know they have to fill out TV on SmackDown and raw over the last several weeks. But a lot of these matches haven't had time to breathe or to look forward to like, hey, we've got that match coming up. But this one, even though they just announced it, was done so well that I think that other bookers, Tony Khan, need to watch how this was done, how it was played out, and uh, and need to go ahead and take some notes. So I'm looking forward to Rey Mysterio versus Dominic. Is Rey going to hand off the mask? Is he going to end it and call it a career? Uh, or is he going to trounce his son and continue to battle one or two days after he enters the, the WWE Hall of Fame? We'll have to wait and see. But until then, Budokan, Budokan, 619. On AEW Dynamite, there was one for the highlight reels. Here at the Suplex City Wrestling Podcast, no pro wrestler in all the years that I've watched wrestling, has ever captivated 
an audience in one match like Elijo de Vikingo as he went one-on-one with Kenny Omega. And, man, this guy was just like watching a car wreck. You could not turn away. So many amazing moves from the AAA luchador that I'm like, man, that guy's going to be in a wheelchair by the time he's like 35. And I know a lot of people said that about Cactus Jack McFoley. A lot of people say that about Darby Allen. Darby does like the crazy, there's just this willy-nilly crazy bump. This guy defies gravity. Elijo de Vikingo is a top star for AAA. And to come on to AEW television and to tangle with somebody like an AEW superstar of, of the caliber of Kenny Omega and really captivate the American wrestling audience. This is our first time seeing him in a ring for most people that are American wrestling fans. But Lucha fans know him very, very well. Uh, Charles, I know that you like Lucha, but we'll we'll go right back to it. El Cornhusker is the resident Lucha expert on staff here at the Suplex City Wrestling Podcast. And I'd, I'd love to get your opinion. I know you were uh, re-watching a lot of his content from that match and kept sending me a bunch of clips like, did you see this? Did you see this? And I'm like, Scott, how can you not see it? So what did you think about El Vikingo? And do you see him, El Hijo de Vikingo, and do you see him maybe showing up around AEW television more? Or do you think that at some point when he's out of his contract with AAA, WWE has going to take notice and uh, and make him an offer he can't refuse? Well, let me, let me say this, and, and I apologize if I say the Kingo incorrectly. This guy defies all laws of physics. The stuff he does in the ring, it, 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 I've never seen before. If you have not seen this match, go on YouTube, find it. It is worth your watch. Like, like JJ said, I have sent him clip after clip after clip. We have put up several clips on our YouTube channel about it. This guy, he 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 makes Ricochet look like uh, he's still learning to get into the ring, let alone bounce around <laughs> in the ring. And, and the stuff that he does. And, and as far as being paralyzed by 35 and comparing him to Cactus Jack, Cactus Jack, like me, had a little bit of padding. You know, the knee pads, the elbow pads, we had body pads. If you take a look at us, body pads. This guy doesn't. He is lean, mean, and a bouncing machine. If you haven't seen it, go see it. And what I like is the fact that Kenny Omega went to Tony Khan and says, this guy is going to be a mega superstar. I want to bring him in on AEW Dynamite and showcase him with the first match of the night so that people can, or the, the last match of the night so people can see what this guy's like. And he did. Kenny Omega let him show off every move in his arsenal. Kenny Omega still went over like it should be because Kenny Omega is the modified superstar in AEW. But man, JJ, Charles, I, I want to know what you guys think of this guy because I was impressed. Yeah, I can really see WWE making a heavy bid. I mean, the only problem that I see with it is that they won't know what to do with them. They already have Ricochet on on staff at WWE, and he's remarkable in ring talent. That's like a come to life superstar, a superhero, and uh, it's almost like they just don't know what to do with him. Of course, that's changed a little bit with Triple H being involved, and there is an issue of size. Ricochet is not very large, so he has been paired with Braun Strowman as of late as a tag team, and I kind of like it. I really like the dynamic of what they've got going on. You've got the incredible wrestling. But is that something that if Elijo de Vikingo came in, they showcase him for a few matches and then really not know what to do with him? So I think that it's interesting that Kenny reached out to Tony and said, man, we got to get this guy on the TV. And honestly, the word that you used was perfect. He showcased them. A lot of people are like, well, why would you bring a guy in like that who's a champion in AAA 
and have him lose on AEW television. Well, first of all, you're exposing him to a much larger audience than what AAA is able to produce. It's made him a bigger star. It also makes him a bigger star in his homeland of Mexico because now he's been on American television. And that's a big deal for most uh, luchadors to be able to go onto American television and to be showcased like that in a main match on AEW, win or lose, I still think he comes out big time ahead of the game. Now, Charles, this was your first time even hearing the name Ellie Hode Vikingo. What did you think? Is he going to end up on AEW television more often? Or you see WWE maybe making a bid for him when his contract is up? Well, uh, boy, what an impressive match. Uh, Scott, Man, your countryman uh, from you know from down there was just absolutely unbelievable. Uh, See, you know, you, you kept sending those clips over, and man, I couldn't, I couldn't get enough of those. You know, you were sending the slow motion ones over, and everything else, and I just could not believe that you know anybody could do those types of twists and turns and all of that. I mean, for a second there, I thought I was watching the uh, the gymnastics at the Olympics. I mean, it was unbelievable. This dude was doing so many twists and turns off the middle rope, off the top rope, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Man, it was so good. And, and good on AEW for putting him in with Kenny Omega. Because anytime you're going to be in the ring with Kenny Omega and you get people like that, who have those types of moves and that kind of stuff. It seems like it almost brings something even more out of Kenny Omega, because of course he's been doing all of those crazy moves and everything else for a long time. But this guy's a bona fide star. There is no doubt about it. He's got such a good look, uh, his, his movement. Uh, and uh, it just, it was, it was, it was such a great match to watch and and the fact that we got to see it on tv and not a pay-per-view you know was was pretty unbelievable because this would be one of those matches at the pay-per-view that people would be raving about the next day uh my advice to aew lock this guy up immediately <laughs> because if wwe uh i i'm sure that triple h is already uh, thinking what dollar amount that he's <laughs> going to put on that check because, the, uh, you know, anybody with half a brain that watched that match would say, wow, this guy. And especially, too, the other thing I'll say is with regards to the international audience, you know, the, the big companies, AEW and WWE, you know, are going after that international audience. You know, we talked offline Scott, regarding the the big uh, emerging audience from India that the WWE is really making the push on, mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, the the especially when you have the uh, the the people that are wrestling in Mexico uh, for those companies down there being so close to the United States, so you know to get them up here isn't you know a, a, a big deal, and. Uh, Man, this guy is really, really good. So AEW, sign him as fast as you can because he's not going to be on the on the open market for very long. No, he's very special. And after this video is over, we're going to go ahead and tag uh, a video of a slow motion of, of a, a absolutely incredible move where he damn near broke his neck. So I want you to, after this video, click on that and go check out Vikingo. It's one that you'll never ever forget ladies and gentlemen at wrestlemania 39 there's a lot of matches that are going to be taking place over the course of a couple of days as wrestlemania goes hollywood the match that opens up night one has been decided on friday night smackdown last night the announcement was made that john cena is going to be going up against austin theory in the opening match of wrestlemania night one and I felt like it was something I really wanted to talk about here on the show because John Cena over the course of the last 20 years has been one of the biggest WWE superstars. And now 
is a world renowned actor in a whole lot of great films. And I just don't know if John Cena being used in the opening match of WrestleMania is a good idea. There is the old adage that if you're not the main event, you want to be the opener. So it could be that trying to go into the to WWE's inaugural showcase of the immortals with a big a big showcase of a match in the beginning when the crowd is super hot. I would love to get your impression, Scott, as to I know how you feel, but but I, I want you to tell our listening <clears throat> audience right, how you feel because it's like the old man yelling at the clouds. And it's something to behold because Scott, Scott's kind of like flabbergasted as to as to what's happening. So Scott, if you could explain to our listening audience what your thoughts are going into WrestleMania with this as the opening bout. <laughs> JJ, the old man yelling at the clouds. Okay, fine. If you want to build it that <laughs> way. Anyway, John Cena, let me, let me begin by saying this. John Cena has been around for 20 years in WWE and he has done it all. Who would have thought that a person would be, a baby face for 99.9% .9 of his career and get away with it without switching back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Who would have thought that someone who wears jorts, freaking who wears jorts for a career would get over? Who would have thought that you can't see me? Well, yeah, I can. Who would have thought that someone who <laughs> does that would get over? But he has, and he continues to get over. He could right now come into the ring, walk around in a circle, pile a steamy pile up in the corner, and he would still get over. He's that over right now and has been for a long time. As far as the comment you said, you know, these really great movies in Hollywood, show me one. I still want to see one. <laughs> I'm looking and I'm not finding one. <laughs> so, that's, that's low. That's um, low. <laughs> But as far as WrestleMania, you know, it seems like every week you always throw me a question and I'm like the the guy out that's like all pissed off. Well, I'm pissed off again. Like, you know what? <laughs> you, you have a bona fide superstar like John Cena. He could, at this point in career, still close out night one or night two and draw eyeballs and ratings. Yeah, I know you mentioned if you don't, if you're not last, you want to be first. Like Ricky Bobby said, if you're not first, you're last. You're last. So that may be the adage here. But for me, I don't want to go first. I, I understand. I don't want to go second, third, <laughs> fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. I want to go 10th, you know, last. But at the same time, man, this is John Cena. This is a, a legend. This is. This is like bringing Sting in and having him lose to Triple H. Ooh, that's oh, still God. sensitive. <laughs> oh, they did that. Oh, never mind. John Cena, I think, should go first, you know, now that we mention it. And I think Sting should have lost to Triple H. So, you know, my opinion doesn't matter in the end. You know, they used to call for my opinion. They must not anymore because this isn't the way I would have booked it, but... Anyway, my, the only thing left in doubt is, are you going to have Cena staring up the lights to put Theory over? Or are you going to have Cena, Cena standing over Theory going, you can't see me? Yeah. I, a loss That's, to Cena by Theory is not going to kill his career. But standard wisdom would tell you that Cena doing the big J-O-B in the center of the ring is the best move for business, considering that Theory is going to be there each and every week, and Cena is not. So, Charles, I'd love to get your impression as a promoter, somebody who's actually promoted events and booked events in the past in pro wrestling. If you're booking WrestleMania 39 and you've got a two-night extravaganza, where do you put John Cena versus Theory? Well, before we get into any of that stuff, I think we may need to make a call to the local authorities because... There is a crazy man who's just walking down the street in his underwear, just yelling uh, at himself and everything else. And he's just going on and on, blathering on about 
uh cena and this and that and doesn't have good <laughs> movies are you kidding me every single movie is a damn near blockbuster all right <laughs> blockbuster. so uh <laughs> cena is man and, and i think uh, to add on to scott's point here is that the only thing that john cena hadn't done was work an opening match so they said hey Let's go ahead and have this guy work the opening match. So then we could say this dude has done everything for the company. So I think that's what they're doing, to be honest with you. But all joking aside over here, I think the beautiful thing about having a lot of these guys that have made it big now, you know, such as The Rock and Cena and Batista. And when I say make it big in Hollywood and, and other things, you know, that allows them to, to branch out is that. It seems to me, and they've been with the company for so long, you know, 20 plus years. And, you know, in Rock's case, he's been part of the family forever. Uh, the beautiful thing for the WWE is that it seems like they can just reach out to these guys. You know, they're right there. You know, Cena probably lives right down the road from, uh, you know, from the lo from the venue. And it seems like they could just reach out to these guys and these guys are willing to, you know, put eyeballs uh on on the product obviously they're going to get publicity for themselves as well john cena is at wrestlemania of course all the major networks and all the outlets and social media is going to go absolutely crazy when they see john cena standing there in the ramp and uh it's just it's a win-win for everybody and i think at this point in his career 20 plus years john cena saying hey wwe triple h if you need me in the first match, great. If you need me to take tickets, great. If you need me to sell nachos, great. Whatever it is you need me to do for the betterment of the company, I'm going to do it. And I, you know, if this is a way for them to just really get the crowd really going, because you know what the reaction is going to be when his music hits and it's the opening match and it's how you're going to start the show. The people are going to go absolutely crazy. And that's how that's the that's what they're that's how the crowd is going to, you know, just really get rolling into it. And I think it's great for WWE. It's great for TV. It's great for them. It's great for John Cena. And, uh, you know, it's the first match of the night. But, hey, I know a lot of other people that are probably sitting there and saying, how the hell do I even get on TV? So, you know, it, it is what it is. But I'm glad for John Cena and the WWE, of course. And it's going to be good for us as well. WrestleMania is starting to really shape up over the last couple of weeks. We only have a little over a week away as uh, WrestleMania goes Hollywood. And I, for one, am excited to see what everybody's doing at WrestleMania. So with that being said, everyone, thank you so much for joining us here at the Suplex City Wrestling Podcast. That's all we've got for you this week. We uh, will be back next week, but if you haven't already, Make sure to like this video and go down below and click the subscribe button. Subscribe to us. It helps us get out there to more and more people with every one of those clicks. Uh, you can always follow us on social media sites at Suplex City Pod. We're there on Twitter, Instagram. Give us a follow. We're fun. We uh, post a lot of great content and a lot of opinions, and some of those are kind of stinky. If you want to follow me on social media, you can always do so at JJ Purdom. And if you want to get one of your questions answered here on the show, or maybe just kept in a box and never really messed with, send that over to suplexcitypod at gmail.com, or you could tweet them at us as well, and we will uh, we'll take care of it. Charles, where can they find you at on social media? Well, they could find me at Charles C. Marquez, and they could find me on Twitter, Instagram for now. Uh, I will be expanding very soon to the other uh, sites, and uh, we'll give updates as, the, as those happen. Dan L. Cornhusker, where can they find you on the social media sites? You can find me at one little place called Twitter, and that is at Scott underscore Falder. I love for just a second, he had to go, he said, what's my name again? Okay, I, did. With the clouds. Know, I did for a moment <laughs> all right well for scott Balder, for charles marquez and myself jj Burnham, thank you guys for joining us here at the suplex city wrestling podcast we'll see you next time right here at the center of the ring